Hi, I am Jean Tong, K-12 Education Manager at Esri Canada. Today we are going to explore ArcGIS Survey 123. Survey 123 is a form-centric data collection tool. If you've used SurveyMonkey or I think there's Google Forms and, and Apple Sheets, like there's lots of different tools you can use to create an online survey. The unique thing with Survey 123 is that there is spatial, there's a spatial data component behind it. So if location matters with the data you're collecting, and who are we kidding? Location always matters. <laughs> Where it matters, um, then Survey 123 is a great tool because in, in your spreadsheet, it also is collecting um, location. And that could be anything from where the person is, um, where their location is, where they're inputting information into the survey, or it could be them choosing a different location on the other side of the world because that's where their grandparents are from. So, but so survey one, two, three, it's form centric, which means when you open it up, it's a form, but location is part of that. And it's accessed all through ArcGIS Online. So it's a tool within ArcGIS Online. So the first thing we're going to do is collaborate together on a survey. So I will also, um, so you have this in the chat. So right here, you can copy that. And I'm gonna do it right now. I'm going to open up another tab and I'm just going to paste that in. It will take me to a survey. So this is a great example of something you might do with your students. Um, so we're using it as an icebreaker activity. So I want you to take a few minutes to add your information to the survey. So here, you can see your name, your nickname, or your alias, or you know what your students call you. Where do you teach? Where are you joining us from? So, which you can answer a few ways by searching for a location. You can drag your map around, but in order to actually choose the location, you've got to got to kind of click in grab your your point there here we go i'm moving it along down southern ontario and then you can see there's a few more options for you to choose and at the very bottom submit so i'm gonna put my mic on mute for a minute and give you a few minutes to complete our first activity All right, so thank you for sharing your information. A little bit later, we're going to get into um, exploring the results of that survey when we look at how you can use the data from a survey to do some analysis. So we'll get to look at uh, what we all shared a little bit later. So survey one, two, three, just as you experienced, allows you to collect data, whether you're um, in the field or, or not, and it allows you to analyze the results too. So you can do that using a map. Uh, there's tables and charts, and again, in the classroom, at home, you're on a device and you're connected to the internet. So it can engage uh, students in the inquiry process, you can use a mobile device. So there is an app you can use on a smartphone or a tablet to collect data, or you can do it through a web browser as many of us have, have today. You can create a publicly shared survey. So the one that 
uh, you completed this morning, it didn't ask you for a username or password. I made it open so anyone could go and and fill that in, but you can definitely uh, make them private as well. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. If you do not have, uh, if students are out in the field collecting data and they don't have uh, the internet, there is actually offline collection capability as well that you can use through the app. So the name survey one, two, three, it's clever. The one, two, three actually stands for something. It's the workflow of, um, of using the actual tool. So the first part of that workflow is asking questions and that's in the design phase and publishing phase of your survey. Next, it's using it to get the answers. So that's where you jumped in this morning, collecting the data. And then three is making the decisions with that data. So it's viewing the data and doing some analysis. As I mentioned, there's a few different ways to look at the data and then to make a decision based on that. So things to consider when you're creating a survey, regardless if you're using survey one, two, three or not, is the types of questions you're going to ask. And then what types of answers are you looking for from uh, the respondents, so possibly your students. So it helps sometimes to have, instead of an open text box where the student has to type in, say, um, the type of tree they're looking at, you could actually create it as a drop down. So that helps in case there's maybe different ways to spell um, tree species. Some examples of how you might use survey one, two, three with your students, or you know, even to test it out yourself as a teacher with your family, could be a family tree project, a history project about your community, student directed projects. So you'll see some examples um, further on, on something called a youth score, where students are going out and saying how how safe do they feel, you know, maybe their walk to school is? Do they have to walk through alleys? Is there certain stores they walk by that they don't don't really make them feel safe so they can, you know, have their um, influence on urban planning in the community? Um, again, looking at river analysis. And so we heard some examples from JC this morning using survey one, two, three. Well, actually, it was to gather um, information from teachers, but they also use it in their river analysis as an icebreaker like we used this morning. If you're find that you're creating lists or making spreadsheets on, on something and location matters, try it with survey one, two, three. And my example is um, my husband and I were both separately calling up pharmacies and getting on wait lists over the last few weeks to, um, you know, get our first vaccine shot and realize that we had uh, I uh, had a list going. And so we turned it into a survey one, two, three. We could both put in the information and we could see on on the map quickly what survey uh, pharmacies we've already been in contact with. And then, of course, for sightings. So if you see um, animals in your community or trash in your community or Maybe when we're able to go shopping around at different stores again, maybe you're going to plan your shopping route of where you want to hit your Home Depots and your Best Buys and, and whatnot. There's lots of resources to help you um, use Survey123. And so here's just some links to some different ones that we have, but I'm going to get in and demonstrate for you and show you starting to make a simple survey. and if you want to go back and see some text step-by-step -step instructions for you, this first tutor tutorial is a great one to go and reference. So we're gonna get started with creating our first survey. So I'm going to jump into survey one, two, three and take you through a few of the different kind of um, options in there. And then I'm gonna turn it over to you to get in and start creating your first survey. So again, I'll show you and then you'll have time to um, try it out yourself. So I've gone to ArcGIS.com. 
and I've signed in. So the first thing I'll say, depending on um, where you teach and what school board you have, you might have a slightly different way you sign in because some boards have ArcGIS Online connected through D2L or Google Classroom. Um, but many of you will also go to the ArcGIS.com site and sign in and you'll be in an Ontario Schools account. So it doesn't matter what kind of account you use um, and if you're in different kinds of sign-ins. So I know I've signed in because I can see my username in the top corner. And beside that, there's this thing called, we like to call it a waffle, but in other technology tools, it's called an app picker. So I'm going to click on that. And within here, there's lots of different tools that I have access to. At the bottom here, it says show more. That's because there's there's other tools that I've moved out of the top because I don't really use these ones as much, so I don't need to see them in here. Yours might be ordered differently because you can move these around depending on what, um, what you use most. So I have the ones I used most at the top. So survey one, two, three is one of those. So I can click on that tool now to, to access that. So most of you are going to have, um, you might have a survey here or two if you've used them before. If not, you, you won't have anything here and you probably have an option in the middle that says create a new survey or it's also shown at the top. So again, we're going to create a new survey today. So you've got a few options. We're gonna stick to using the web designer tools and that means all we need is the internet. This other one, Survey123 Connect, that's a, a download that you can put on your desktop to use and it gives you some other functionality, um, but using the web designer has, has so many options in there, um, it probably will be enough for us to get started. We're gonna start with a blank survey. But I encourage you on your own time, you can go and check out the different templates that are here and they're based on different industries. So you can go and see and actually create your own survey based off of how they might use it in, in different industries as well. So I'm going to click on get started. You have to give, um, like all areas of ArcGIS Online, you have to give things names. So, uh, let's see, I'm going to call, oh, it's May 1st. Welcome, May. <laughs> going to call it May 1st, Oweji, a tag. That's a keyword that helps you search for the survey or um, your students search for the survey. It's, it's just like you would use a word, a keyword to search for things on a browser on the internet. I can see I don't have to give it a summary because there's no red star beside it. So I'm just going to leave that and I'm going to hit create. So I can see my bar is moving along here. So that first sec, the number one of survey one, two, three was designing and um, publishing our survey. So we're going to get into doing the designing. So I've got nothing. Uh, nothing added to my survey yet. There's lots of different question types that I can add to my survey. So um, when when I turn it over to you, I encourage you to go and explore some of the different question types. So I'm going to focus on just a few of the top ones that I see get used. So the first one I'm going to add is a single choice option. And so I can just double click that and I can see it's added to my survey. And over here on the right hand side, I can see now that um, it's switched from add to edit. So I can now give it a title here. So I'm going to label this. So I'm doing a tree survey for my students. And so my questions are going to be around that. So is the tree dead or alive? And so now for the choices, and I could give them a hint. I'm not going to give them a hint. So I'm going to type in alive, dead, not sure. I can reorder these. I can add another choice and then I can delete it. 
I can also allow for other, but I'm not going to do that in this case. As I scroll down here, I see I can change how um, the survey question looks as well. I can make it horizontal and there's a horizontal compact option. So I'm going to actually leave it as horizontal. I can determine if this is a required question. So you can see now that red asterisks has been added to the question. And I, if you, um, have questions, you know, cash to this answer. What does that mean? It shows you here. I usually leave that unchecked. Right, back to add. So the next type of question I'm going to add is multiple choice. Now, again, like a lot of technology, there's a few ways you can do anything. I could double click this or I could drag it over to my survey as well. And I see now I have the edit option again. So if they choose that the tree is dead, I would like them um, to share with us why, why do they think the tree is dead? Now, this was the tip that I learned yesterday. I actually didn't realize it existed in survey one, two, three. If you have a longer list, you might not want to go in and manually write them for every choice well there's this thing called batch edit and so what that does is it pops up a window where you can paste in the choices and so i already have a spreadsheet or it could be you know a word doc or in an email of five reasons why the tree may be um dead and I just copied those and paste them in in this little window here click OK and now it's populated for me I thought wow that's great if you're looking at doing a survey of species at your in your community you might have a long list of species to add so this is a really great way to um, populate your survey by using this batch edit tool and just like the other ones, you can have uh, vertical, horizontal, required question, and so on. So in my survey here, when I'm over here, if I want to delete this question, I can delete it. If I want to duplicate it, I can. When I hover over this question, you'll see I have this, this other choice here called set rule. And I'm going to show you what that means. So if you have a question, so is the dead tree or alive or not sure, if, if the student chooses alive, they don't need to see th this. They don't need to see this question here. So we can set a rule that this will only show if they choose dead. So, and you'll see down here, that's not here because this is a, um, multiple choice questions so you can't have a rule with that so there's certain questions that you'll see this rule function with so i'm going to click that so now i can choose the if it's dead show why is the tree dead and you can have lots of different rules in within one question so now i can see it shows shows that um that there and we're going to get to see what that looks like in action in a minute. So we've added a single choice, a multiple choice. We've added a rule. This is a new question I hadn't seen before, ranking. You know, I mentioned that every few months there's some updates that happen. And so I'm going to go and add ranking. Hmm, I don't really want it to go up here in my survey, so I can click and drag that below. So you can click and reorder your questions. So I want the students to rank their favorite tree, their favorite tree at school. So I have a list already, handy batch at edit. I have a list already of the trees on our school property. And I'm going to paste that in here 
And there we go. I'm going to make this a required question and head back to add. And we're going to see what that looks like in a minute too. You can add images to your survey. So this can be, um, you know, where the students are either browsing for images on their computer or their phone or using their camera. You can clarify if you want them to only use their camera. So maybe that's good if they have to actually be out in the field gathering the research. You can say, well, you have to use your camera to do that. But I'm going to do that. And you've already participated in a survey where you had to add a picture. Tells you here the size. You can allow them to add more than one picture and you can set that out for them too. Most important question type is map. So there's lots of options here with your map. So I'm going to call it location of tree. And here you can see this is something newer in survey one, two, three. You only used to be able to click point, collect points. You can actually collect lines and areas now as well. You can't choose all of them for a survey. You have to decide which one you want, but you do have that option to choose different um, different tools or different some um, different types of features. You can determine what you want the base map to be of what you're collecting on. So imagery, streets, topographic. I'm going to choose imagery for this. And depending on what your um, what your survey's on, like ArcGIS Online, it's a map of the world, but you can choose to have it um, zoomed in at a large scale or zoomed out at a smaller scale, depending on what they're sharing. So if they're sharing, you know, where their family ancestors come from, you might start with it at more of a global scale. But if you want it to be really um, specific to your school, I decide to um, have it focused on your your school property and have it a, um, a larger scale. And the last thing is, is if I click down here where this submit button is, you can change what it says. It doesn't have to say submit. Or it could say, you know, something else like check in or depending on what you want to use it for. Right, so I want to see what's my survey going to look like when my students are using it. So first thing I want to mention with this tool, you have to hit the save button. It's not like some other tools like Google Docs or even the story maps where your um, work is saved automatically, which is a wonderful um, addition to so many web based tools with survey one, two, three, you actually have to hit save and I can see it's changed to saved. So I know my work is saved. So now that I've saved it, I can go to preview and see what it looks like dun, 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 before I publish it. And this is handy. It shows me what would it look like on a desktop, a phone or a tablet. So I'm going to choose phone. And that's great. It shows I've got full uh, Wi-Fi and connectivity and my battery's full. This is the perfect, perfect mix for my phone. So I can see here if I choose dead that the um, choice now pops up our rule of why is the tree dead? Why do you think it is? And here's the ranking question so I can choose and move around to get my ranking and that's how that works I can reset that select my image take the picture find where I am 
And last but not least, share your tree data. So this is a great way to see what your students will see when you create your survey. And I'm going to close that preview. You can go back and change things around and then save your survey again. So the last thing you have to do though for your students to actually be able to um, interact with your survey is to publish it. So publishing it then allows it to be accessed. It's still private right now because when you create things by default, it's private. You only get to see that. So I'll give it a second to publish. And while it's publishing, the last thing I'm going to show you is just how you can change the appearance. Um, and this is where, uh, you know, it can get really fun because it doesn't have to be this green background that you see um, that is used by default. You can actually change it to be um, different colors. You can use a photo as a background as well. Oh, haha, ha, unable to publish my survey. Well, isn't that fun? <laughs> With all technology, things happen. <laughs> Let's see, I'll try it one more time. And in the, um, in the essence of time, I'm going to open up oh, another survey for you. I'm not going to troubleshoot what I did or what happened with my internet to not uh, allow me to. There we go. So for, for the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to show you one that I've already published. So this is the one that we already filled in this morning. So under edit, Okay, this is again where you can go in and change uh, any content that you've already shared. Appearance, this is where you can choose, maybe you don't need the header showing, you can change the color, use a photo. You can actually add your own photo and search for your own image. And options, this is where um, it shows you what comes up when someone submits a survey. So by default, it has a green check you can you know change what it says here and this is important if your students are out collecting data you might want this checked off you might want them to show a prompt where it will say oh you can collect more data and so that's an important option there so we went through we added a few different types of questions we looked at how to set a rule and how to preview your survey. So I'm going to hand it over to you for 20 minutes and I'm gonna pop my timer up. So that will take us to 11 o'clock to go in and have a play around with creating a survey. And I think the goal would be to add, you know, two types of questions, save it, preview it, check out some of the, you know, appearance and options and try publishing it. And when we come back together, we're going to look at what this collaborate, analyze and data aspect are of survey one, two, three. Right, so the next thing we are going to do is pop over to these other um, these other tabs here to explore these. So I've saved, I've previewed, I've published my survey. Now I want to collaborate. How am I going to either collaborate, one of the questions was collaborate with a colleague in creating a survey or, you know, share it with others to actually contribute to the survey. So if I go to collaborate, I can see here lots of options. Here's the short link I can grab. I can copy that. This is fun. 
it gives you a QR code and it says click to download so you can download that QR code. I know a teacher that had a survey for their school so they just had posters up around the school with the QR codes um, on the poster so students could just scan those with their phones and respond to the survey. So a few settings here, open it directly in a browser, which just means it opens it directly in say Chrome or Safari. You can give the user the option um, if they open it in a browser or in the app if they're out collecting data. So if you're not sure how your end users are going to be interacting with your survey, then you can choose, choose that option. If you have another website, a school website or class website, and you want this survey there, if you click embed website, it gives you the iframe code that you can take and put it right into your website. Who can submit to this survey? So if you don't want your survey to be behind a username and password, you can choose everyone. Now I'll remind you, when you do choose that in your survey, you can go back and unchoose that. So if you only want it open for a day, you can have it open and then go back and change that. If you have, um, it's just people within your school or your ArcGIS, ArcGIS online organization that need to access it, you can choose members of your organization. Or if you've created a group and we're not going to create groups today, but I can definitely, uh, if that's something you're interested in and you're, you don't know how to create a group, um, you can create a group for your class or a project and, and um, share with that group. So then every member in that ArcGIS Online group has access to that survey. What can submitters do? So do you want, so thinking about your students collecting uh, data on trees, do you want them to only be able to add new records? Could they update a record that they already added? Do you want them to be able to delete records too? There's a few other options here. Allow multiple submissions or only one. Survey status. Ah, so. If you do only want your survey open for a short period of time and you don't want to have to remember to go back in and change that setting, this is helpful because you can actually schedule your survey to be only open between a certain dates. So, and that's where you do that. And handy save button to save the choices you've made. And again, you can always go back into your survey and change. So again, once you've decided how you want to uh, share it, you can you know, grab your QR code and the URL, and then that's what you can share, just like I did with you this morning to complete the survey. Sharing results. So it's one thing to share the survey so people can contribute to data to it. It's another thing to share the results, so that data that's being collected. So again, just like on the last screen, you can get a URL to that. You can choose for everyone to see the results, only certain groups. Do you want them to see all the data in the survey or only the ones that they submitted? Do you want them to be able to export that data? So maybe they could download it as a spreadsheet or something else or only view. Now, who can update the survey? So this is this is new, actually. So the question on how do you work with a colleague in creating a survey before this morning, I would have said, well, work together on your survey questions and types of questions and answers you want to have out of the survey. And then one of you goes in and actually does the creating of the survey. This is a new option here, so you can choose particular um, groups of people in your organization to help you actually create a survey. And then you would choose save. So again, you're sharing 
your survey for people to be able to collect data using it? How do you want the results of your survey shared or who do you want to have access to the results of your survey? And that's under the collaborate tab. Now, I'm going to skip over analyze for a minute to go to data. Again, with with these tools like survey one, two, three, there's different workflows. So there's, you know, probably five ways to even do one thing in this tool. So I'm just showing you um, kind of one way for most of most of the things because you can view your data in Arceus online as well, but we're just going to stick in survey one, two, three to keep it nice and simple. Right, so I'm using the survey that we completed this morning to explore the data. So you can see I've got a map here that I can explore. I can change the base map myself if I want. I can click on, see, I've got this form view. So if I click on any of the results, I can see them over here. Now, because it's my survey and I created it, I can delete records. Not that I'm going to delete Mrs. RD, <laughs> but I could delete it. I could edit it um, because this was an open survey. Maybe I do a quick scan and I find something that doesn't make sense or someone, and I see this often with surveys. Sometimes there's a dot floating out in the Atlantic. I could quickly grab that dot and move it to the proper location. So you can go through and do some um little editing if you feel like you need to but i can also see here that there's 31 responses to the survey so that's an easy way to you know quickly look at your data you can export it there's a few different ways you can export your data you can open it in the map viewer um right from in here and save it to a map and we're not going to get into this today but this is where you would want to go you can save your map so then you can do some analysis with it or layering of other data um, in ArcGIS Online. So we're not doing that today, but that's where you can go and save that map and do some more work with it within GIS. Right, so we're going to get into analysis. So if I click on analysis here, just going to quickly show you that I can explore the different question types. When you have, I think it's more than 20 responses, it will make a word cloud. Scott, your name's been identified as the most important in my word cloud here, so <laughs> well done. Um, I can see the responses here. Oh, it's because there's two Scots or there's the word Scott came up twice. So it could have been first name, could have been a last name. What do you teach? Now I'm going to get down to some of the other types of questions here. So here we can see, okay, most of us are secondary teachers. I can, I've got some options here. I can do a bar chart, pie chart, map. This is pretty fun. So, I'm going to stop having all the fun and I'll show you how you can go in and explore those results as well, because that's one of the real powerful things with this tool. It's the number three. It's being able to analyze the data to make informed decisions. So in the presentation that I shared this morning that starts out looking like this, and I'll pop it in the chat again in case you've lost lost track of that tab or something. We're in this getting started with your first survey, one, two, three, and you'll see here, analyze data. Let's explore the results of the opening survey. So if I click on this, it's going to take you to the place where I just was, where you can go through and have an ex exploration of what you know, once you've collected some data, how you can go through and have another look at that data. So I want to give you, 
let's see how are we doing here i'm gonna let's take about six minutes so that gives us to uh actually not yeah we'll we'll take until 11 20 and i'm gonna give you some um time to explore this data just you know five minutes and then we'll come back together wrap up and have a quick break before we go on to story maps so a few minutes to go in and explore again let's explore the results of the survey and i will pop that in the chat again for those of you who may have misplaced that url for the presentation All right, it's 1120, so I hope you had a chance to get through and just explore what um, the results from our survey this morning. And I've just got the map up there. So to answer a question that started uh, kind of off our morning, where is everyone coming from? It's great to see see a bit of a, a mix of um, people around the southern part of the province, but maybe there are people from other places and uh, you know where you identify with your location might not be exactly where you're sitting right now but that's that's great so thank you for sharing that um, information this morning there's some questions like oh well, where are there any resources to use this with my students mm -hmm. so beyond that tutorial that shows you how to create a survey do we actually have any lessons where people are using surveys in the um mm -hmm for a lesson, what well, we do on our website, k12.esri.ca, we have lots of teaching and learning resources. And if I pop over to our resource finder where our lessons and activities are, I know that we have a series of lessons called, um, where are we? So like, exploring climate change in my community, nature in my community, history in my community, and healthy communities. I know for a fact all of these resources, and you can even see in the description here, the teacher will create a survey for their students to collect data, and then the students do some analysis um, on a map, and then they create a story map to highlight their findings. So there are a series of lessons that we already have kind of put together and have a bit more handholding for your students on creating questions and what kind of questions they might want to create and and that or actually it's your sorry as a teacher you're creating most of these surveys but there's some more help there for you. But then the workflow is the teacher creates the survey the students are all um, doing the work in their community to gather data, and then they each make their own story map on their analysis of the data they created. So there are some lessons there that will help you uh, bring Survey123 into your classroom. So I'll just uh, end with, in this uh, presentation from today, there's some different examples, or we call it inspiration, of just a couple of ways we've seen um, Survey123 used. There's definitely way more than this, and I know there's some great experience in this workshop today. So there's some different inspiration here for you to see how Survey123 is being used. And so today, you had a really great first start with Survey123. We did the what do we call it? Our one, two, threes. We ask some questions, and maybe that's just one question. A survey doesn't have to be overly complicated. We collected some data, we got some experience filling out a survey, and then we went to look at how you can view that data that's collected. And that was just one example. There's other tools called dashboards and things that you can bring data into, which is really fun. But today we just did it all within Survey123.